Good day. The purpose of this video is to demonstrate a Tesla charging at 110 volts, just a standard wall outlet, in extreme cold. We'd like to interject for just 10 seconds to ask you to click like if this is the kind of thing that you like. It really helps us with the Google algorithm. And if you're interested in electric vehicles, the energy industry, high technology, things like that, please click subscribe because that's the kind of thing we talk about. Thanks, back to the show. So let me just give you a bit of background. Uh, prior to buying the Tesla Model 3 Standard Range Plus that you see here, I was told that in cold temperatures, you know, actually cold temperatures, not just chilly temperatures of say minus 10 Celsius, which is about plus 10 Fahrenheit, give or take, that the battery maintenance system would consume the entire 110 volts and that you would get practically no charge off a 110 volt outlet. In my experience, just hasn't been that. So I decided to record this video. It is a very frosty minus 25 Celsius, which is about minus 10 Fahrenheit. And I've got this Tesla plugged in on my standard wall outlet in my garage. And you might think to yourself, well, it's in a garage. That's gonna make a huge difference. Yes, it no doubt does. But let me go over my garage because it's probably not what you're thinking. It's an unheated garage. And as you can see in the video here, the door is uninsulated. Uh, it's just a piece of sheet metal. And I'm, I'm not exaggerating when I say that, it's just a piece of sheet metal that's been formed into that shape. So it is uh, doing very little other than keeping the wind out. I don't know what its R value is, but it's pretty terrible. So when we look at the temperature inside the garage, the car itself thinks it's about minus 12. And I think that's probably accurate. And you can see the car is on the other side of the garage, away from the man door from, uh, to the house. So let's follow its progress as it charges and see what we actually get. So to make this test as harsh as possible, I parked the car at about 2 p.m. and plugged it in about 7.30. And you can see here it's 7.38 p.m. and I've got 116 kilometers of charge. You can also notice that there's a little blue bar here, which is the equivalent of a snowflake indicating that the battery is in fact cold. So this is about as, you know, chilly as it's going to get. And this is, this is real life. Let's take a look what happens a little later. 10.22 p.m. I've got 139 kilometers of charge, minus 23. That's about minus uh, 13 Fahrenheit because the minus 23 is in Celsius. You can see it's going to stay cold all night. Then at 1.44 a.m., yeah, I'm not much of a sleeper, by the way. It's up to 167 kilometers and it's chilly. Minus 28 at 8 o'clock in the morning uh, and I have 230 kilometers of charge. So that's about minus 15 Fahrenheit and 143 miles for our American friends. And I am pretty happy with the results of that. So before you start jumping for joy about not having to spend the five, six, 700 bucks to install a 220 volt circuit in your garage, which by the way, actually adds value to the house. Keep in mind that there are two things you need to think about. One, there apparently are people with Teslas that are having trouble charging at 110. Just because I haven't seen it ever, doesn't mean it doesn't exist. Perhaps those vehicles are defective. Lord knows there are enough problems with Tesla overpromising and under delivering. And actually, if you want to know where Tesla overpromises and under delivers, click the link at the top right. And you'll see our short video on everything from road noise problems to terrible voice controls to subpar navigation. The second thing is that the numbers Tesla provides are fictional. So when you look at that battery charge that says 230, you're not gonna get anywhere near that. In fact, uh, we're going to put a link in the top right hand corner here shortly to show you the video we're recording right now on just how inaccurate that number is. By the way, this is my fourth plug-in electric. So I can tell you that my others, which were Cadillacs and Fords, had similar results in that they charged just fine at 110 volt in my garage. So I think this completely dispels the notion that you can't use the 110 volt charger that ships with every EV to charge your electric vehicle in extreme cold weather, including Tesla and Cadillac and Ford. Now, should you have a 240, 220? Absolutely. I fully plan to get one, except I charge up at work and I've proven 
that I don't need to have a 220 at home. It's just not necessary for my use case. Now what's changed is I was laid off a few months ago and then contracted back just one day a week. So I still have access to a charger at work, but that's pretty tenuous. And I wouldn't want to rely on having only my 110 volt charger at home. While there are thousands of 240 volt chargers around and some superchargers, there's nothing within even 30 kilometers of my house as I live just outside of town. And even then, Tesla, for instance, only has two superchargers in the entire region of one and a half million people. It's still pretty pathetic as far as chargers go. We need to get more chargers out there. If you park outside, the results are probably different. But as I've said, I park in an unheated, very badly insulated attached garage, which I think is a pretty common scenario for most Tesla owners. And I only need about 22 kilometers to get to work uh, where I can charge up fully. So, you know, that by the way is about 15 miles. So being able to charge 116 kilometers, which is 70 miles in 12 and a half hours, yeah, it's just fine for me, and I think fine for many people. As I said, I fully plan to get a 220 install just on principle, as I'll only own EVs in the future. Please click the like button if you like this video or found it useful, as it really helps us with Google algorithms. And if you're interested in electric vehicles, the energy industry, high technology, things like that, please click subscribe because that's the kind of thing we talk about. If you have any questions or comments, I'd love to hear them. Please put them in the comment section below and we'll get back to you.